There's a lot of information out there around the hardware side of EV conversions, but not so much around the software side. And it's really equally important. Like we've talked about it before that actually spinning the wheels from an electric motor in a basic level is not the challenging part. It's the integration and the packaging. And it's also that software configuration because that's how you're really tuning, I guess, an electric motor. How that software configuration and calibration works with the existing drivetrain, the existing gearbox and prop shafts and axles and everything like that, how it delivers power smoothly in a way that you want, that's fun, but also sympathetic to the original driveline that was, of course, originally built to handle the complexities and intricacies and, and personality, I guess, of the internal combustion engine that it was built for, not an electric motor that drives completely differently. So it's how we make it feel nice when you put your foot down, but it's also how we make it fail well. So failing gracefully when you're at particularly extremes of operation. So when you're about to run out of batteries, how you run out of fuel, when does the fuel light come on and what does that do to performance? Does it limit it and degrade it so that you get a nice soft roll off? How does it deal when you're at fully charged and you're regen braking and therefore putting more energy back into the system that then would overcharge the car. So there's these two extremes and a whole lot of complexity inside that. So I wanted to just go through the software settings and the calibration that we do in these cars and how a lot of the experience from the team have worked in global OEMs and configured this stuff, how we've put a lot of that learning into the motor and the, and the software we're using here. While this video will mostly be me clicking things on screen and is obviously less visually interesting than putting some cars together. I find it quite fascinating because this is a bit of a window insight into what happens in every car that you buy. Different software, different tools, more advanced tools, more, much more work by hundreds of people to build a, a mass market vehicle. But similar processes and similar thought patterns, similar testing, similar operations to, to make all this stuff work and make you know, a bunch of moving parts feel good to drive. This is the software that allows you to configure the controller or the inverter. So the device that turns the DC from the batteries into AC that the motor needs. With that translation and conversion, what we're able to do is really modulate and control a lot of parameters around how that motor works. And on this screen, you can see a lot of things like, hey, we've got you know, forward enabled, we've got a these few switches are either on or off. Um, we've got these certain outputs happening. This very important one being the main contactor, which is the, you know, the final relay that gives power to the motor. A really useful thing is the little thumbs up sign down there. And that means all systems are good. How friendly is that? It's also very annoying when it's pointing down and is red. But anyway, the, the contactor is on, the car is on. We can see battery voltage that we've got, so total battery voltage. We can see whether the motor is still or, or spinning. Um, you can set a whole bunch of things. You can see the motor RPM and all these kinds of things. Also some limits, whether there's limits based on certain speeds or torque or things like that. And that allows us to configure some of the switches in the vehicle. Where it gets more interesting, there's wiring diagrams and all that. Where it gets more interesting is when we get into the configuration. So the main configuration, if we go into the motor, you can see the kind of motor that we're using. Um, it has all these, you know, all these parameters that get really deep into uh, electric motor technicalities around the, the, the rotor and the axis because you basically, you know, you're spinning a, a bunch of magnets with a bunch of other magnets and all those have parameters. The first one that's really quite interesting and configurable is the current limits. And what that means is that you've got, you know, a, a percentage of current, so the amount of energy, electricity, that it's allowing through the system from zero to 100, and then putting that over speed, so the speed of the motor from zero to 100% of the allowable speed. We limit the motors to five and a half thousand RPM to be considerate of the gearbox that's in these cars. So you can see that the red line being the drive limit, being the, you know, moving the car forward, that we actually do limit the current a bit at low speeds and then bring it up to almost maximum speed before we get to the top end where we sort of roll the power off. Now, this motor could can spin to 9,000 RPM. So we could leave it pulling maximum current all the way. But we want to be able to give you that feeling 
that you should be changing gear in a sense. So you feel the motor have that little bit less power when you're at the top of the rev range and without saying anything or instructing you, you feel that it's time to change gear if you're driving really hard. The same with braking, that we limit the braking, so the regen braking ability, depending on RPM, so that it has a nice roll off and a nice feel at either end. Then there's also motor protection based on, and this is, I mean, this is out of the box stuff, right? This is the motor, if it's over temperature, over 150, from 135 degrees to 150, it slowly derates its performance down to about 35%, gives you 35% for another sort of 10 degrees, and then we'll cut out. Now, if you have no cooling on the motor in Australian conditions, on the motor controller, no liquid cooling, that's about 20 minutes of operation before you hit this, and then you feel yourself get less power, and then you've got about another 10 minutes before uh, it, the motor will turn itself off to protect itself. Then you've got things like control and, and spin sensor, which are parameters that you basically, when you first plug in the motor, you hit these buttons and it, and it calibrates the controller to the motor. And, and this one in particular, the spin sensor, it just needs to know which direction it's spinning and how fast it's spinning, which is pretty important for it to know so that everything can, can flow on from there. So there's a, there's a bunch of steps that you go through, all detailed in the manual, that about commissioning the motor for the first time to get that performing and, and basically knowing what it's, it's doing. So there's a bunch of parameters around the you know, major configuration of the system. And the big one uh, for us is, is really battery and how we configure the top and the bottom of the charge state. So what you're seeing here is the, the under voltage protection here, the over voltage protection here. So basically your low battery, your high battery. So low battery is pretty understandable. You're running out of batteries. What do you want the car to do? You don't want it to, you don't want the batteries to get so low that the battery management system just shuts down the system because that would bring the car to a dead stop. So you want the motor to kind of indicate to you that it's running out of charge. Now you're going to get a fuel light before all this happens anyway, but when you get even beyond the, the fuel lights on, the battery gauge is reading empty, what happens then? Well, the motor starts to cut back its available power. And so you feel like the car's running out of you know, power, I guess, running out of power, and you're only going to get about 45% of its, of its ability. So you'll be able to still, say, drive off the freeway or whatever you need to do, but you aren't able to really put your foot down and, and really damage the battery system. So there's a slow roll off here, you can see from B to A, allows you to drive a little bit and have a little bit of power before it uh, completely you know, shuts the system down because you've you've gone too low. Now, there'll be there'll be other warnings before you hit that mode, hit that, but it's a slow ramp off, and that's what's important. At the other end, you've got over voltage protection, and that's rare but occasionally useful. So, if you were fully charged, which we're close to now, and you lived on top of a hill and you were fully charged, and you pulled out and you went immediately into regen braking, if you did that with no protection that would basically overcharge the battery and overcharging the batteries is bad too and, and the battery system would try and protect the car and turn itself off again. So we have protections for that too. So if, you, if it's at its maximum charge and it starts to regen and go beyond that, it also cuts back the available power, which is basically power back into the batteries down to about 5% of what's available. So that means that you can never, you just don't have regen and every other electric vehicle is the same. If you're fully charged, you don't have regen braking because that energy has nowhere to go. So we have this protection at that, that end of the charge as well. There's a whole bunch of other, I'll try not to go through everything, but um, we have a bunch of operating profiles. These, these controllers are configurable with up to three modes. We have road, off-road, which you see the buttons in the cab, but we also have a limp mode. And that mode is basically the, there is an air estate, but it's still operational. We limit the power. Now you should never, hopefully ever see this. This is also can, comes into play when you get into a very, very, very low state of charge with the battery. There's a whole bunch of outputs that we use for various things. Um, you can set service intervals and that kind of stuff. The other big one is some of this stuff around um, setting the, the torque, the way that torque is delivered, so power is delivered. So there's a few things in that. One is how we deal with 
the throttle pedal. So this here is the way that power is delivered, the ramp that when you push your foot on the accelerator, this blue line is indicating where the throttle is at the moment. I'll run around and push it and you'll be able to see what happens. I'm just gonna check that's in neutral. And if I push the throttle, you'll be able to see that blue line move. So that moves and it shows you the, the ramp of the throttle. And what you actually want is full throttle. I was only putting it about halfway, but you want it to give you everything before you hit the floor. It's not a one-to-one -one linear thing. It just gives you a nice smooth graduation of, of power. Brakes are similar and you can see a much smaller travel, but that's the pressure in the brake lines. And that pressure in the brake lines is translated into this to give to enable regen braking and give you more regen braking force based on the position of your pedal. So what we have configured is that your first little travel of the brake pedal is actually before the real brakes kick in, because it's still an old brake system, that is more regen braking. And then you'll start to feel the real brakes in the car kick in. So that's the disc brakes in the front, the drum brakes in the rear. You don't notice the transition, but you're getting both regen and real brakes, depending on how hard you push push down on the pedal. The other thing is torque rates and torque, well, torque mode and rates. So depending on the operating profiles, we have different rates that are going on. So acceleration is 90%. You know, now these are percentages based on amount of torque available per second. So you're able to get 90% of torque per second. So if we had that to say, say if it was 25%, uh, that would take, that means it would take four seconds to get to 100% of torque. Now, delivery anyway. So that, these are all kind of, you know, these are can all be confusing what it, torque is, you know, torque times rotation equals power. But you've got all these, this is the real crucial thing around the torque delivery and how much residual torque you have when you're at, in a particular gear at a particular speed. That feel of, can I always put my foot down? and get a little bit more power. So there's also things like deceleration rate and neutral braking. Those are like taking your foot off the throttle. So you're still giving it some acceleration, but you're slowing down how much regen braking do we put in? What's the neutral braking rate? As in when you've got uh, your foot on neither pedal, what happens? And what's the pedal braking rate as a maximum? So how does that deliver as a rate when you put your foot on the brake? All of these numbers are things that are based on, built up by trial and error really, and how it feels within these cars. And we have different rates depending on whether we're building a short or a long wheelbase. So we've got speed limits as well that we can set based on certain modes. Obviously we, we can put the motor in reverse through a switch if we want to and we limit the maximum speed that it, that it does that. We also limit the maximum speed on low battery. So there's also torque limits as well, which we set based on, um, so this is percentage of torque in total that it can do in terms of what can the whole system do, how much torque are we allowing, and that is different to the amount of torque available per second, if that makes sense. I don't really know how to finish this video, but I think it's best if I do something real and show you something happening based on input that I do in the car and what happens on the screen. So if I jump into real-time data, and I'll bring up the motor screen, so you're seeing speed and torque and ac axis and spin rate of the motor. I'll jump around the other side. So I'm probably out of focus, but that's okay. You've got to listen to this. I'm going to press the throttle. I'm going to spin up the motor. Check neutral again. And you can hear it spinning. And you can hear it stopping quickly too. That's because regen braking is enabled. There's a flywheel there and it's going to have its mass will be enough to trigger regen braking and put energy back into the system but I will also turn off regen braking and you'll see the difference. So I accelerate, motor spinning, I let it go. It stops quite quickly because regen is using its, is braking the motor and putting energy back into the car. If I turn off regen braking and do the same thing, you'll hear that it just keeps spinning. Just keeps spinning and doesn't really stop. In fact, you can hear the gear stick in neutral rattling and 
the handbrake and a few other little bits. If I turn regen braking back on, immediately comes to a stop. Software in a Land Rover, USB ports in a Land Rover. It's weird, but it's what makes it feel really, really good.